Allora, blading. <coughs> Yo, Felix, wie geht's, mein Freund? <laughs> Alles gut? Yo, what's up, guys? Let me just pick up the mouse. Because I need to settle down the question for Bobby. Everybody knows Bobby's puzzle, so... Alles super, mein Freund. Just stay here at home. Kind of suck. Richard, hermano, what's up? Come stai? Tutto bene? Ciao ragazzo. Who's that? <laughs> True. No, it's my boy. It's my boy Bobby from Israel. <laughs> I still have like those questions for Dominic. Yesterday we did have some problems with him. We weren't able to connect because he forget. <laughs> Grande hermano, famiglia tutto bene? Alex, come dici? All right, yeah. So what's up with you guys? Everything's fine? All good in the hood? Grande Richard, ma sei a Barcellona? Situation in Milan is quite funny. I mean, um, we are like still locked here at home. We must be, we have to stay here at home. Uh, we are not able to uh, to leave our houses, and right now. Every, every time we just go out to go to the grocery or to go to the, um, to the pharmacy, we need to wear the masks. It's like an obligation. Otherwise, there's a risk you, you can get a fine. So, yeah, it's better, it's better to wear them. Oh, is man, like, lucky you that you are able to work. Actually, tomorrow I might gonna have like a work. So I need to figure out with the client what time and stuff like that. And then they, they have to send me like a permit to go around through the city because otherwise I'm not able to go around. So, yeah. But I've seen like in the US right now, like many of the states, many of the states are like shutting down or doing like the, the lockdown and stuff like that, isn't it? Do, 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 hey. All the hermanos are here, man. Yo, John, we should do like, we should do one of these bleeding chats, me and you. What do you think? Could be cool, no? Hmm. Crazy. Crazy. Because, yeah, man, like, there's a lot of things I would like to ask you, like all of those RFCC stuff and, like, uh, how was the scene back then in, in Florida and all that? Because I remember you were, like, you were super active back in the day, um, like, in the mid-2000 and something like that, within all of these videos and stuff, right? <laughs> I'm just trying to reach up something on there. That is why I'm... Nah, no, no. I'm not saying you're old, man. You rock. No, no, no. I was just saying that, like, uh, um, you were around all of these guys, like Frankie and all that, and Joy and all that, so... <laughs> oh, 
Okay, yeah. Um, Bobby's here, and um, let's wait a couple of more minutes to wait the rest of the people to tune in. It's a trap. We do have like two of the, the most active photographers here in the, in the blading scene. John and uh, Felix. Do you guys know each other? Felix is a good friend of mine from Germany. And um, yeah, the good old days. And um, yeah, I used to hang a lot with him. Especially when like uh, we did like this tour together. Call it Inferno and Paradiso for BMEG. And they came here in Italy and we travel like through the whole north and uh, um, north south, like the north and the center of Italy for about two weeks. Yeah, it has been cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hmm. Maybe next winter clash. Luckily, we were able to do it this year. I'm glad that like all of this uh, this thing happened after the winter clash. <laughs> yeah, I was like uh, the party boy, huh? Yeah, he was. He, he definitely was there. Were you? Yeah, you were there, right, Felix? You came here by car with the. Uh, you came there by car. Uh, <laughs> true. Uh, um. What was saying? Uh, you came by car with Nake at the Winter Clash this year. Yeah, yeah, you definitely met him, uh, John. Hmm. Yo, let's get this thing started. Um, let's see if Bobby is still around. He should be. Yeah, he's here. Yeah, and Nake was trying to having like a good time. In with Bobby. Let's see what's going on in Tel Aviv. Yo, what's up? It was good, bro. <laughs> good to see you, brother. Yeah, you too. Wait, let me put this up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Can you hear me good? Yeah, I hear you perfectly, dog. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad to right. see you. I'm glad to see you, yeah, man. To see you too. So, how was filming? I, you told me you went filming earlier. Did you did you get what you wanted to do? I mean, <laughs> kind of sketchy actually because uh, yeah, because this whole uh, you know lockdown and stuff. So I just went just me and my girlfriend, and uh, I mean, if it's iPhone and Instagram stuff, she can handle this, but. Uh, with the camera or fisha, you know, it's a little bit harder. Like you need, you need time, you need experience. You know, it's not like, True. yeah, it's not so quick. So, I mean, we tried. We got the clip. It's something to work with, but um, yeah, too many, too many. Like uh, me watching the clips and kind of like hmm, maybe if this was like this, if I did that, if she did that, whatever. It is what it is. We got it. I'm happy overall, but you know. Not the easiest. Yeah, true. It's like th that feeling that like um, it's not even the the guy's fault. I mean, like the, it's cool to have like somebody who's coming with you to to film and stuff like that. But sometimes you're more concerned about like how the way the other person is filming instead of the, like con and like con concentrating yourself on the tricks, right? Exactly. And skating like a rail, uh, it was like a, a eleven eleven uh, stairs handrail. Like pretty steep one, and then another little rail kind of for finishing. Like it's a little line between them, and like I didn't feel so comfortable with the trick. I needed some time to kind of get the trick done, and then kind of every moment in between, I had to focus on what she did and how she felt. If she, so, it was like in and out and in and out of like uh, you know the comf the like the zone, you know and true. Yeah, it was uh, disturbing. Also, you want to skate rail with at least another guy, you know. You don't want to, you don't want to smash yourself on a rail by yourself. <laughs> true, so, like, true that. I mean, it worked, but definitely it wasn't, it wasn't easy, you know. It wasn't like a nice, easy, quick trick. It was a bit frustrating, but yeah, it is what it is. 
No, but it's cool that like um, your girlfriend came with you and like uh, she started filming you and stuff like that. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I do love like see you guys like going around to the skate park, doing all mm -hmm. this content and like uh, uh, she'll film you, you film her, and that's pretty. That's pretty nice. It's pretty awesome to see that actually. Yeah, it's, it's super cool. I feel like uh, it's like a dream a little bit. You know, you can True. just like, I mean, and it's like. Okay, for me, like Instagram is my job, right? This is what I this is what I live off right now. So I need to do it anyhow. And sometimes to do it, you need to push the people around you. You know, like even uh, even like my ex girlfriend, couple of years back, she was not skating, but I still kind of asked her to film me every now and then. You know, but now it has so much more flow and it's so much easier because both of the parties they want to be involved in it. You know, so yeah, it's. Uh, it's amazing. It's good stuff. I enjoy this time. Mm. No, it's you. You can tell from the videos. You can tell that you guys are enjoying yourself. So that's mm. the, that's the main thing, and that's pretty. That's pretty important. Maybe, maybe who knows? Like maybe with a little bit of practice and stuff like that, she will be able to handle easily as like she's handling those iPhone clips, the the camera ones. So I'm sure, but but I don't. I I, I mean I know from my own experience. It took me like I don't know like maybe two years to really master a camera, but maybe six months to kind of be able to produce clips that like kind of make sense, but not really that I know, know what I'm mm -hmm. doing. And with the iPhone is so much easier, but uh, yeah, for sure. You got to start somewhere. And I mean, which we, we filmed it without the fisheye, which worked, but we tried with the fisheye because this is a line in between two rails, you know, it's ask for a fisheye. And I was like, okay, let's try. And I was explaining and doing tests and like, okay, you know, but it didn't, <laughs> at some point I was like getting really frustrated and she was like, oh, I can't handle it. I can't handle it. I don't know what I'm doing. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. Fuck it. True. Just no. It, it is. No, no, I got, I, I got the feeling. And uh, I mean, just like you were saying, it's not even like a, a fault of the, the, the people who's coming with you and like they're gentle and kind enough to, to help you out the field, to film. It's, it's, um, there must be like some of those uh, mix in between, right? Yeah. And so like uh, with that being said, are you guys able to, to go around in Tel Aviv or like uh, there are like restriction from the police, from the government because of this coronavirus situation? There is uh, restrictions right now. I think tomorrow they they go for a full total lockdown. Um, it was like every week it became more, you know. At first it was stay away two meters, then I don't know uh, some different bullshit, and now it's like you only can go out for shopping or um, like for groceries or. Uh, 100 meters from your house so this worked for me because i put the p-rail like literally 50 meters from the house you know so and and this is no problem but i think from tomorrow is a total lockdown for a couple of days i'm not sure <coughs> we'll see mm. true true it's almost the same thing here like you're able to like you're not able to leave your house besides like uh, um, like urgent stuff like going to the grocery or like going to the to the pharmacy because like all the other stores are, are pretty pretty much closed and like you're able to do like sports but like you have like a, a range of like 200 meters all around your house and uh, and so yeah like I, luckily I got like a, a, a garage where I'm putting my P-Rail in my box so I'm, uh, I'm mm -hmm. lucky enough you know to to put it on there and like but most of my other friends for example Gabriel or uh, the other guys back and stuff like that, they're, they're, they aren't able because they don't have like a garage or like a place, you know, to, to mm -hmm. do activities in front of their house. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty, sucks. and it, it, I, I think, mean, yeah, well, I'm yeah. sorry. No, it's okay. You can go. I mean, like, it's getting all like everywhere, the, the, the same situation. Like we started earlier, like the, than the rest of the, um, the world, but like, I, I'm, from what I'm seeing, like everybody is reaching out the point that we are right now, just like you yeah. said right now. 
But for how long do you have this point of only 200 meters? Uh, oh, like two weeks, kind of. Two weeks. Yeah, okay. it has been like that since week because it started like the 8th of March, so like a month ago within like the, the, the quarantine, but like the very first week, like nobody really listened to the, to, the, to the government and to what the news were saying. But then like when we saw all the numbers increasing, like after, I remember like first six, five, six days, nobody, like people were like still around and stuff like that. And then after that, like when we saw like 300, 400, 500 that per day, we were like, man. Yeah. Actually, I was the very first who was saying, ah, man, that's bullshit. That's some, uh, some stuff in China. It will never affect us. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. But then like when I saw it, like coming here with that full force and like how quickly it spreads, man, like. I wouldn't say that I was, I was scared, but like I was worried about my parents because my parents, they are like in their 60s, so you know. Yeah, I feel the same way for sure. For us, it shouldn't be that dangerous, but uh, for sure for the family and I mean, just in general, like whatever, you know, like I don't feel, I don't feel like this situation is that bad for me because because of the PRL situation, I just take it out. And I get to skate every day. I catch a little bit of sun, and then you know, just staying home, cooking, doing all the stuff. I mean, it's it's a little bit annoying. You wanna you wanna do other stuff, but I wouldn't say that for now it's too crazy for the way I experience it. You know, like I mean, whatever. If this is what needs to be done for it to go away and be more safe, then whatever. You know, we do it. True. True. Yeah. Exactly. This is like a, and like the more uh, we are following these rules, the faster and like the, the easier will be to get rid of it so we can go easily like out of this situation. So, yeah, there's nothing yeah, much we hope. can do. Yeah, I mean, with this stuff, I feel like I don't know enough. I don't know enough about this stuff. And sometimes like, you know, you just say like, you know, fuck it. If this is what will help, then let's just do it, you know. True. I mean, today I went to film maybe 200 meters from the house. So, I kind of, you know, <laughs> you're safe. <laughs> yeah, still, I mean, for us, it's not exactly safe. They said 100 meters, but still, like, um, for sure, I wouldn't go too far. I wouldn't go with the buses. I just stay around the area of my house. And yeah, I mean, it's scary. It's scary. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's all one big propaganda. I am fuck knows, you know, but whatever. Two weeks, one month, we can do it. You know, it's not such a big deal. And it's also kind of interesting experience, I feel like, for 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 me, you know, or just for everybody, you know, like just something a little bit different, staying more home, staying close to the ones you, like, you love and just, uh, I don't know, just be home a little bit because every day is like going out, skating for, for so many hours, or going to my girlfriend, staying there, staying with friends, traveling around. So my life is like kind of, like I like it. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I like it that it's so packed with like just going out every day for so many hours and but now it's like staying home and doing, I don't know, first thing we did is like clean the whole house. So like, <laughs> there's something about it, you know, there's something that, that I'm not used to that is kind of cool and kind of interesting. And for now, because I do get the chance to go and catch a couple of hours on the PRL, I'm feeling like that's fine. I mean, I don't want to sound like I would like to, it to be for, you know, for my whole life. But as for now, I don't feel it like so hard. It's, it's just cool, different, different times and just adapt and just do what you need to do and whatever, you know. Yeah, true. Like at the end of the day, it will be like an experience and like it will be like something that you can learn out of it. And like you can you can tell it one day to your kid. Yeah, man, like yeah. back in 2020, like the whole world war stuff and uh, we are like should have to stay at home, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, it could be like a, a pretty cool, interesting uh, experience, right? I've seen I've seen a meme in the internet. So they say like, uh, like, you know, in, in the history, there was all kinds of epidemics like that, you know, like some flu or before, you know, some stuff that killed shit loads of people. And there is a meme in the internet is like, uh, this is so cool. We are part of like epidemic at this time, you know, 
<laughs> so it, it's kind of in a positive way, like, you know, like definitely something to tell for the next generations or whatever. You've been part of it. You did what you had to do. Many people, I mean, whatever, it sounds like some kind of fun right now when I say it. Obviously, it's not a serious matter, but, you know, as far as my perspective goes, I'm like, okay, I do what I need to do. And it's different. It's interesting. And I stay home with my girlfriend for many hours. And she's studying uh, from the in school with mm -hmm. the Zoom. And I go to therapy every week. So I do the therapy through Zoom as well. So which is kind of cool, you know, interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it's just adapting. True, true. Yeah, definitely. You have also a shout out here for... This guy, Mark Zio Villabone, from Colombia. He says, like, you're my best roller. So, yeah. Oh, Shout yeah. Out to you. <laughs> Thank you, Hermano. Then, yeah, pretty cool. And, like, um, yeah, going back to, um, to Israel, like, um, how is right now the blading scene uh, out there? Because, like, from what I've seen and from what I learned, like, back in the day, like, in 2004 and something, it was, like, a quite strong, strong scene. And right now it looks like it's getting... It's, like, it's getting even more solid. You, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's pretty look um, tight and, like, super connected, well connected with, the, with the, like, the rest of the, the world and stuff like that. So what is going on right now in Israel, blading-wise? Yeah. yeah, shout out, shout out the old school skaters, huh? <laughs> I mean, I think, um, yeah, the scene, the scene in Israel was bigger, obviously. But it was bigger everywhere. Everywhere, at the time. yeah. 2004, whatever. And there was shredders, like real shredders. They did some serious bangers back in the day. And there was some time, I guess, 2010, 11, 12, when it was a little bit more quiet, maybe even 13, a uh, couple of years. I feel like um, at some point, uh, I kind of got back into skating and we kind of assembled, slowly we assembled a little crew of people who really likes it and really into it, even though there was not many at the time, but there was still people skating a hundred, two hundred, whatever. There was always a certain amount of skaters and yeah, we assembled the crew and uh, I was very, I was very um, like, um, how do I say it? Like ambitious to kind of get out there in a certain way and I, I the thing is about Israel that is a little bit disconnected from the or from the scene and from the market and like you know like let's say if you live in Poland for example you get hidden skate and they are fully connected with the whole industry right so if you push yourself towards hidden skate for example then you can somehow find your way out there right and if you if you live in the uk you have a couple of shops there and there is industry there and there's people who are already pros there and people who are already you know they already know the business and in israel it was for a long time pretty disconnected in a way like we couldn't really yeah, it was like you you need to force it. You need to force your way into the world for them to know who the fuck you are. You know what I mean? Because you can spend your whole life in Israel skating, and not like not nobody will know you. Only the scene here. You know, you can even film videos and everything, and nobody will know you. Especially at the time when it was only roller news, there was no social media, you know, there was no. I mean, I guess some people can relate, like people who is from smaller countries, you know, I guess in America is a little bit easier, for example, you know, I mean, it's hard to be, to, to be out there from wherever you are, you need to work hard, there is no... You know, there is no two clips and you're like famous or whatever. But <clears throat> for sure here it was hard. And I think I, uh, with the help of my friends, I kind of found a way slowly. And I also, I went to a lot of competitions. So I was, uh, 
I was like just traveling by myself or even meeting my dad. Awesome, there's a motorcycle. Even meeting my dad somewhere in Europe and I feel like just showing my face in competitions and showing what I got kind of got me a little bit of friendships and some mm -hmm. friends and I got to know a couple of people here and there, a couple, you know, a couple of Facebook friends, a couple of people that will share your stuff. It was still very small, but it was something. And slowly when I started getting some attention and some sponsors and starting to see the big picture, you know, it was like, it was, uh, it was a game changer for the whole scene in Israel because now in a way, there is nobody who skates who doesn't know there is a scene in Israel, who doesn't know there is good skaters, who doesn't know it's alive and exists, you know. But we just needed that channel, you know. We needed that channel to open that channel somewhere. Now, I was, I was, I guess, I was the guy to open that channel, but I definitely didn't do it by myself, you know, without my friends, without their push, without their filming, without, you know, I didn't know how to film, I didn't know how to edit. Uh, Anton is in the chat. Anton, shout out Anton. He was filming me in 2012 for clips. Maybe the, some of my first clips when I came back to skating. And all of this stuff I learned with my homies. You know, it's not like, it's not something you can do by yourself. And yeah, I mean, now the channel is open and now it's a bit different for you. Maybe right now you feel like, oh, of course I know all the guys in Israel. But for a couple of years, it wasn't, of course, at all. You know what I mean? It was something that was very hard to reach. Mm -hmm. Like, just a quick story. Like, I, I did, like, a couple of edits uh, before, like, 2012, 2014, 2012. Just uh, some some videos that didn't even reach Roller News, you know? Like, just just to understand, I couldn't even get myself to be featured in Roller News, Right? Uh, they, they, they didn't put it. We sent it. They didn't put it. My friend Omri tried to send some clips to Razors back in the day to get some sponsors, and they didn't reply. You know, so it was like that. Like probably I wasn't good enough. I get it. But how how do you how do you cross over? You know, that was a question. Sure. How do you make it? How do you make people to notice you? Like, I was never planning to be a pro. Honestly, I was just planning. Like, I think. This is what most people want when they skate. They want to be noticed. They want to be appreciated, you know. They, they, they don't necessarily want to be the best, you know. Some people want to be the best, but this is a different mentality. I still don't want to be the best, and I still I don't think I can be the best. I don't think this is me, you know. I see Brosco, I'm not there. Sorry. He can be the best, you know. But... But I can be whatever I can be, you know, and, and, and it's something and it works and, you know, I get paid, you know, so, it, it, and I, and I got like the attention and the appreciation that I wanted to, you know, even more than I could ever dreamed of realistically. But for sure, my goal was always to be out there. And now that I'm out there and I have such a big platform. And I can also show my friends with that mm -hmm. platform. And this is why this is why there is XCV. Besides being friends, it's also like just you know, like hey guys, I get the channel. So let's let's put you guys on the channel as well, especially for new people who are coming. Because, like, I can say that, for example, some of my friends they don't want to be anything. They just want to skate. Kind of like, I'm kind of like, I'm pushing them to be known and shown. But there, for them, it doesn't matter. We go street skating, we go filming, you know. It's not that important for them. But for the new guys that will come, this is why I try to have an open channel to the big world where they can just show themselves and prove themselves. And maybe if one of them wants to be a pro, it will be a little bit easier, you know. True. And yeah, that's 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 part of the goal, you know. Like you, you, yeah, you you go on top. But if you if you don't stay with your friends and your homies, like you can be alone in there, you know. And true, definitely. You know, this is this is not why I'm skating, right? Why am I skating? I'm what? 
if I'm looking 2011, 2012, 2013, 2015, 16, all my sessions were involving my friends and they were the reason to go out and skate in a way, you know, it's a very friendly sport, you know, and uh, I mean, right now I do it by myself sometimes because I'm so deep into it, but I don't want to be alone in there, you know what I mean? True, true. No, it's definitely deep what you were saying, just like um, what Anthony is saying. It's like, it's a pretty cool message and like, uh, uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool to see like how inspiring you could be for the next generation within, within like saying those type of message because that's like how, in my opinion, a pro skater should be, you know, like somebody who was able to inspire a younger generation and including everybody in like uh, into the, the scene and like into like um, the the moment, you know, just like you're saying. I remember the struggle that like um, Avi or Yair had back in the day to get like at least a little bit recognized. So what you have done like during those those last three, four years, it's like really really outstanding in a way because it's like I remember there's they, they were like struggling every time to get like just a little bit of recognition and you to come up right now with the with roses and get the pro model and stuff like that it's it's pretty rewarding and it's pretty cool to see the messages that you are saying like that you are not doing it only for yourself but you're also doing it for for your for your homies and like for the world scene in, in Israel it's pretty that's pretty cool because thinking of you like with you, like everybody know that like in Israel, there's like a pretty cool scene and like um, there's like a lot of uh, talented skater and stuff like that. So thumbs and up. Spots and people come here and you know, Nils was here. There was, there was, I mean, a lot of big names was here and you know, all of this stuff that didn't happen for so many years. I'm not saying it didn't happen at all because in nineties fucking, I don't know what Aro was here, you know? So, there was a couple of ways of Israel being out there, but I think now it's the strongest uh, wave and, and I feel like this is something that I want to push. I know that one thing I know is that I struggled a lot in a sense that I needed to, to pay my own flight to go around the world, sometimes by myself, literally by myself, to places I don't know and talk to people I don't know and I had shit English and I had to go through that just to get some recognition and being in this position I am right now with the platform I have I think it's senseless for a kid coming up to have to go through that even though right now the game is a little bit changed with Instagram and everything true it's a bit different when I started thinking about this stuff, there was no Instagram yet. So it was still, I felt like it's a very, uh, you know, good cause. Right now it's possible even without me because it's, uh, you can be featured via Instagram. The all information is, is, is easier to, you know. Mm-hmm. But definitely, I, don't, I just don't see a reason if a talented kid comes up and skates every day and puts himself in Israel, it doesn't need to go and pay shitloads of money just to be shown in competitions around the world just to be known in any way, you know? We got XCCV. Let's put you on, you know? And this is what I try to do. And of course, it's, it, it's, it's not on me. It's on them. They need to want it. They need to ask for it. They need to push for it they need to be talented in a certain way they you know but i can give this little little extra platform for it to work easier you know and this is yeah this is part of the cause man that's pretty that's pretty true like that's true and that's pretty cool so like what does it mean to you like to get the the promo the like you already asked in a way about this question but like uh, uh, what was your feeling when you have received it, and like when you were planning to do it with the with the with the guys of Roses or Roches, as we used to say here in Italy? Sorry, what was the last last question? Uh, like the feeling that you have, like uh, the whole production or like the whole like um, uh, making of of the skate, like and how do you feel it when you receive it in your in your own hands for the very first time? 
I mean, I mean, it's it's fucking cocaine. What can I say? You know what I mean? Like it's it's a high. You know, it's the biggest. It's the biggest of goals in rollerblading. You know, I mean, not to ruin the party, but after you get it and and there is a, a you know, it passes a month for two or three, and you keep going. You know, and it's not staying the most special precious feeling forever you know and there is new new objective to conquer and there's new ideas and it doesn't end there nothing ends there one thing i learned in that process is i felt like when i get to that point or that point or that point and these points always keeps on running away from me you know what i mean like and now when i have the pro skate i want five pro skates you know what i mean so <laughs> It's it, it doesn't end there, but for sure it was special. It's amazing. I'm I'm happy. I'm humbled. I I don't think I deserve it. You know what I mean? Nah, like, come on, it, man. I feel like the world kind of gave it to me almost as like a almost like as a, a gift. Like you worked hard, you get it, but but not necessarily as if I'm just the best and I deserve it so much. You know what I mean? Because I don't see that about me. And yeah, designing it and uh, I mean, I I pretty much had uh, like a free, a free hand, you know, like almost. My original idea was pink. Everybody Damn. knows that I, it's obvious. I wanted, I wanted straight up straight up full baby pink skates with white salt plates and white frame straight up they said maybe this is too much you know <laughs> like, like because you know i mean it's a pretty risky thing like is it gonna sell is it not it's still risky you know I I love it. I think it will be super cool, but it might be some kind of a niche thing. Maybe it's something that needs to be done in a different manner, like a very limited edition or whatever, you know. So, but um, so they said like maybe something else. I said, all right, I'm gonna try, and I really really liked the the Valo EU skate that was mm -hmm. a couple of years back. And I never got to skate it, and I skated all the V13 Valos that came Damn. out. This was the only one I missed. So from that, I was kind of more uh, aiming towards some kind of gray, you know? And eventually I found a gray that looks different, so it won't look exactly the same, and I kind of shaped it a little bit different, but, you know... Overall, this was like my my idea is like I never skated the gray valos. I thought they looked dope as fuck. I want gray valos, a little different, but I want gray valos for sure. And the pink details, kind of, you know, it was obvious. It was some kind of like, okay, you don't give me the pink, but give me some kind of pink. You know what I mean? And they were cool with it straight away, and man, we did it. You know? True. Yeah, just like Bachelor she was saying, like um. It would sold out. I do think like the world pink skate. It could like um, it could have been like a cool thing because it could like hit two different markets, like the the, the bladies and the bladers. So I mean, of course, it could have been like a little risky, not little like risky, of course. But then, like in the other hand, you know, you can get like different markets, like the 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 markets of the bladies. So yeah. But right now, my skate did hit the market of the bladies. I think so. But also, this market is pretty so. It's pretty small, you know, when you look mm -hmm. worldwide. Yeah, like, true, true. I mean, I I admire every girl that skates and goes hard, you know, like amazing. And I hope there will be more and more and more girls coming in, you know. Fuck, my girlfriend skates, you know, like who am I to say anything? But in the same time, you cannot, right now as the situation is right now, you cannot, uh, uh, you know, only only aim towards the girls market in a sense that it will sell you uh you know enough of a product like you know like a thousand skates you know what i mean like mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. is, you know so um 
so I had to go something, but I think baby pink is not only for girls by any means, you know, it can work, but I guess it's a little sketchy and I can understand from business side of things with roses, you know, like they, I mean, there's only much as the risk you can take in this industry right now when it's so limited quantities and so, you know, like every skate you don't sell means a lot, you know what I mean? True, yeah, definitely. Could be like a losing of costs and like losing of money in a lot of senses. So yeah, and there isn't that much money to lose anyhow. You know, <laughs> when you're playing millions, you know, you, you you know what I mean. I mean, every lose is a business is a lose. You don't want to lose if you if you're making millions and you lose half a million is shit. You know, but in the same time, you can take it if we're talking millions. But when we're talking, you know. But like, yeah. I wouldn't say coins, like, but like kind of. You know, like we, we, we barely eat, you know, we barely <laughs> eat. And losing from that is, is literally losing bread sometimes, you know. So true, like, true. you know, it's not like, oh, I couldn't buy my Ferrari because I took the risk, you know. It's like, you can go to the fucking grocery shop. <laughs> no, no, no way, you know. And I mean, it is what it is, and fuck it, you know. I I will still push for a pink skate at some point, but not right now, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But it could be like a cool thing. With that being said, like, when did you started skating? Because like earlier you were saying, like, you stopped skating for some point, like for some time, and then you came back, right? So when did you yeah. start skating? I started skating like, like really ninety eight, ninety seven, even what ninety seven. I got I got my uh, K twos like uh, um, maybe fatty it's called I don't know like a black and fatty yellow. They, they could be like the fatty pro or if they're black and yellow uh, 98, they might be the 250 cc. Fuck him, man, bro. I mean, so am I. No. <laughs> I started skating in 2000, so. <laughs> Two thousand before, that, right. before okay. that, I don't know. Oh, I see. There was a guy who said two fifties. So yeah, there might be the two fifties. It's possible. I don't know. And uh, yeah, so I started skating ninety eight, ninety seven. I skated mostly vert and uh, skate park, wooden skate park. It, you know, it was the time. I mean, I don't know if it was the time, but it was what I knew. You know, because I didn't know any street skating and I didn't feel any attraction into street skating as well. Mm -hmm. I remember somewhere around 2001 or two, uh, someone showed me like a street video and I didn't feel it. I didn't get it. You know, I didn't get it. It was almost like a different sport for me. I didn't get what I'm watching, you know, and... And yeah, I mean, I was very childish in my approach, I guess. I mean, I was a child, so whatever, but you know, I didn't I didn't understand the deep deep side of things. I was just skating and I was pretty good at it, you know, and this is all I knew. And at some point, I mean, life got a little bit, you know, messy and I was like, you know, I was a, I was a furious kid, you know, a lot of anger, a lot of emotions, a lot of problems, and it took me away from skating slowly. Like I said in the podcast, it was also not so cool from the from the people I hang out with, you know, and I didn't feel like, like you know, you, you, you do all of this gangster shit and then you go put your rollerblades in like no fucking way, you know what I mean? And like at some point I just got off completely. I skated for a little bit every half a year for 2005, maybe one time 2006, I'm not, I think five, maybe last time and already 2004, I started fading completely and yeah, at some point, uh, two, 2011, I just came back to skating, you know. Wow, so it was like a long gap. It was a big gap, yeah, yeah. it was, a, yeah. It was a big gap, and uh, it was painful gap as well. Like looking back to it, talking about being the best. I mean, with this gap, you know what I mean. Like, 
everyone who skates knows that probably the time that he learned most of the tricks and the technique and the rails and whatever was at the age of, you know, 14, 15, 16, 18, 19, you know. And after after that, it kind of slowly starts to hurt. You know what I mean? You know, <laughs> yeah. Like, you fall and it starts to hurt. When you're 14, you fall, you get the fuck up, you know, unless you fucking crash, like, super hard. But, yeah, it started to hurt and it started to be different. And, I mean, this gap kind of is... Uh, it's something that maybe is, uh, I mean, I'm not feeling sorry for it. This is what I had to go through in life. But for sure, I think I could have been so much more experienced if I skated that time. And if I skated with the right people that time. Yeah, but, but like, yeah. who knows that like, uh, uh, within like those years, just because of the struggle and you were telling me before, like after a while you were like getting pissed because like you weren't able, just like, with Avi or Yair to get like the, the, the right exposure that you guys deserve, like all oh, those guys deserve. So maybe it was the destiny, oh, like you, you had those gaps and then like, you just came back and slowly you build up your, your own career and right now look at you. Like you are the very first um, Israeli person to receive a pro model who's influencing not only the people in Israel, but like people all around the world. So, I mean. I mean, you, you're right, 100%. There is no looking back and saying this shouldn't have been the way it was because it did end up being the best way that could happen for me, you know? So, um, oh, I've, I see, like, uh, someone saying, talk about you in X Games. I mean, that's kind of funny. Dude, mm. I would love to see, like, people like you or, like, a mix of, like, uh, the seven of the best later we have in one of those X Games curse, man. It would be like, a oh, yeah. like yeah, you, Joe, Joe Atkinson. Uh, like very, like very specific bladers, you know, you, Niels, Joe, uh, maybe Derek Anderson, you know, like showing them like different, like a uh, way of skating. It could be pretty, Yuto, man, it could be pretty cool. And so yeah, Ichiro, sure. dude, it could be like amazing. But yeah, sure. so taking sure. back to the topic. Um, yeah, like, uh, of course, like there shouldn't be no remorse, but like also in the other hand, there are because... Of course, what you're saying, it's true. I mean, it has been like five, six years and you could have been done more. But like, yeah, look at you right now. You're like influencing. But I really I really don't think, yeah, when you say it, like when I think about it deeply, I really don't think that if I kept skating and not going through the whole process that I did, I would like come back into skating and uh, like appreciate it the way I appreciate it and appreciate life in general the way I appreciate it, you know, and appreciate freedom and appreciate, you know, being clean from drugs and, you know, stuff that you can only understand after you go through that shit, you know, and, yeah. and probably, probably maybe I would have kept using drugs and skating and something in between, kind of not here, not there, you know, because when I came back, I came clean. I came like, okay, I took my break. I did what I had to do. Now I'm here for good. You know what I mean? So this is maybe something that probably should have been the way it was. So, yeah. No, that's as well. Like, again, just like I was saying before, like, that's a, those are pretty deep messages. And I'm pretty cool to, to having this conversation with you, man. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. I mean, people don't talk about it. Come on, let's let's speak the truth. You know, <laughs> like it's been, it's been, it, it's it's so fake. You know, for me, one thing is that I learned when I started seeing the big picture of what it means to be pro, what the industry, who is behind the industry. Because I know, I mean, I don't know everything, but I know a lot of stuff because I have interest in it. I ask questions. I want to know. I'm like this annoying pro. You know. This annoying pro who wants to know how many skates do you produce? How much you're going to pay me? How much you made from it? How, you know, I ask all of these questions and don't keep it like, oh yeah, thank you guys. You, you brought me a hundred euros. I'm going to suck your dick forever. No, fuck you. You probably made like a thousand euros. I want 200 euros of it. You know what I mean? Like, let's talk or at least, at least tell me the fucking numbers and, and all the information that I can know. And one thing, yeah, I'm going different topic, but what I wanted to say in, in, in first was 
what are we seeing? What are we seeing? We're seeing the highlights. We're seeing people drinking beers, smiling and doing tricks. But I mean, we don't see the pros when they are alone at home. Are they feeling good? Mm, are yeah. they depressed? Do they have money? You know, how they, are they dealing, you know what I mean? Are they dealing with life? Like, like they have struggled with their girlfriends. You know what I mean? Maybe they, they, maybe they don't always feel good. Maybe they have like an addiction problem. Maybe they're drinking too much beers. I don't know. Like, I'm not going to say any mm -hmm. name, but you know, maybe they shouldn't be drunk from, from the morning till the evening and they should fucking check what's going on with themselves. You know what I mean? And we don't talk about this stuff. We don't talk about depression. We don't talk about suicidal thoughts. We don't talk about struggling with relationships. We, we don't talk about any of this shit. We only talk about like tricks, you know? And this is a certain way of communication. Rollerblading is a, is a way of communication. And, and I get it and I appreciate it. And it's a cool way of communication, but I think we need to go deeper And this is part of my, you know, this is part of my idea as a person in, in my position. It's like, hey, guys, look, uh, you know, I have bad days. Sometimes I wake up and it's shit, you know. Sometimes I get to the spot and I can't do shit. Sometimes I scream the fuck out when I get, can't get my tricks. Sometimes I'm frustrated. Sometimes I'm thinking this shit is not even fun, you know what I mean? So, like, and, and I think a lot of people can relate to it. Because when even even me, I'm part of the problem sometimes. Because when I show my Insta clip, obviously there is there is not much like uh, yeah time in the one minute to show all of the frustration that I felt sometimes. You know what I mean? But for sure, I think this is something that needs to be out there or at least talked about. You know, so people will know. It's not always. It's not always. Pink flowers, you know. Sometimes we eat shit for breakfast, and, and we people too. A pro is a person too. I'm nothing better than anyone else just because of my position. You know what I mean? Nothing better. No, I'm no. dealing with shit daily. I'm dealing with shit fucking daily, you know. And I want because you know sometimes even on my Facebook I have some people that are unknown or something. I don't know who they are. You know, they're not in a they're not in a position so i will know who they are you know and and i see them posting stuff about struggling with daily stuff because they post it on their facebook they don't expect me for example to see it or reply to it or you know what i mean because they think i'm in a certain position but i feel related bro like you're depressed bro i'm depressed too you know i mean not not right now not today but just in general i have my days as well So, you know, I reply and I comment on their stuff and I put like and I just like, and I wish it will be possible to show everybody in skating that, you know, it's, we're dealing with this shit too, you know, I'm nothing, like really. No, it's pretty, yeah, it's awesome, man. It's really cool to see like how you are pretty like down to earth as like, uh, yeah, I used to say, and like to see like, uh, I would say that like, uh, for like somebody who's like in a way unknown watching like uh, people like somebody like you that have like the name up there and stuff like that being there like trying to show him like some love and stuff like that it could be like super helpful and super deep so man like thumbs up for what you're yeah, doing for like sure. for, and for being yeah just like you were saying for being real you know i mean if i didn't have my skates and my style and my and my position then i would be just just another guy right so i'm still i am just another guy you know what i mean so it's not it doesn't change anything and yeah i want i want to show it i'm still thinking how and why but you know i definitely have a project in my head when it will be more clear from my perspective at least that you know we're just people and there's nothing nothing like yeah because i just don't know i This is something now I know a little bit about some people, you know, but for a long time, they, I saw these guys, all the pros, like some kind of figure out there in the sky, you know what I mean? So big, so serious, so, so appreciated and untouchable. And when you get closer 
and you see and you're like first thing you want to say is like bro you need therapy not skating like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so like so it, from that from that place i want to people to see and know you know like yeah, I mean, I think I was clear with what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it is definitely, definitely. So, do you think, like, because I do think that, like, uh, for me, um, skating it's a way, and like for probably ninety uh, percent of of the bladers that, that we all know, are, it's like a, a therapy. Do you think in the same way? Oh, for sure. But you know, it can easily become like. Let's put it this way. Skating is not a therapy. Therapy is therapy. Skating can help you and can help you evolve and can help you uh, grow and can give you a good structure in life and can give you, I mean, plenty, millions of different things, good feelings because you're doing sports and whatever, all of this shit, you know? But it's not therapy and if you got issues skating will not fix it and if you got problems with your girl and you cannot fix it going out to smash a handrail will not fix it all due respect so i don't know i for me this is like part of my therapy and a very big and main part but it's not i w i wouldn't be clean today of drugs just because of skating period done there is no way I was clean, and then I got to skating, and it helped me stay clean. You know what I'm saying, but dude, that that's like just like you were saying, man. That that's pretty real, dude. I mean, I mean, like really. Yeah, thank you, thank you for saying that because I would imagine like it could be like um, something hard to to talk about, like especially in a platform like that. So, nah, it's okay. I mean, if you if you stay real, then it is what it is, you know. I mean, there is nothing, and I talk about it all the time. In it. not all the time, of course, but like, it's not something. It's not like a big secret for me. If you accept yourself, and you know, you you live with yourself, and you put the things as they are, it will also help you to accept yourself because it is what it is. You know what I mean? Then. That's a that's a deep one, man. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I mean, with, with that being said, we already like uh, almost getting like an hour of chat, man. Easy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I would like to. Hello. Hey. <laughs> so, brother, um, I do really would like to to thank you for your time and for everything that you have shared here with us, because like yeah. what you what you said is like. Um, yeah, really, they repeat like deep thoughts. So really, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us and like uh, for sharing this moment uh, with, with all of us. Sure. And thank you. Thank you to all the people that I was here connecting with us. To all the shout out to, they, they said to you, it's pretty cool to see that. So, Bobby, dude, thank you so thank much. You, thank you. It's, it's right shout, to out, say, shout out to XCCV. Toda is good. Yeah, shout out to XCCV. <laughs> shout out to Israel. Shout out to everybody who skates. Shout out to all the kids crazy kids that i see out there fucking amazing we need kids guys make sure i don't give a fuck who you are make sure there's kids in your scene you know this is this is the this is life you know life is about the next generation always you know unless you're a kid it's always about the next generation so make sure you got them awesome bobby tell them once again mazatov and i hope to good see night you soon. stay good safe night. Ciao, boss. Bye-bye.